I'm Jolene Wynn, and this is the Porn Addict's Wife podcast, episode number 93, Emotional Intimacy. Your life does not have to revolve around your husband's pornography addiction. You are not defined by his choices or by what he sees on a screen. You are not just the porn addict's wife. You are so much more. In this podcast, I'm going to teach you how to go from handling it to healed because I've been where you are and you don't have to stay there. My name is Jolene Wynn. I'm a member of the LDS faith, a certified life coach, and a wife of a former porn addict. And this is a podcast for the porn addict's wife. Hello, my ladies. How are you guys doing? Happy Monday. I actually am recording this on the day that it's coming out. I am recording this on Monday. So if you guys can hear, my kids are kind of rocking out upstairs. Today's President's Day. Happy President's Day. So my kids are home and they're kind of rocking out upstairs to the Descendants soundtrack. So if you guys, (laughs) I don't know if you guys can hear that. Hopefully not. But if you hear that, I apologize. They are home and that is what they are doing right now. And it's keeping them very happy and entertained. So we'll just leave them up there doing that. Um, Ladies, Last week was so fun. If you guys did not get a chance to join us for Coach Week, go sign up for my emails so that you don't miss the next one that I do. I loved Coach Week. So Coach Week was last week. We did three days of coaching calls with all of y'all, and it was amazing. So many of you guys emailed me afterward and just shared with me the things that you learned. Someone shared with me that she, her biggest aha moment was that she had never asked herself what she thought of a certain subject before. It just had never occurred to her. She said, I've been a people pleaser my whole life. I haven't even taken the time to ask myself what it is that I think about this. And I love hearing those kinds of things. And so I'm so grateful for everybody that got to come. And for those of you that didn't, again, go sign up for my emails. Go to jolenewin.com, sign up. There'll be a little pop-up box that comes up and you can just put your email address in there. And that way you, not only do you get access to my free training that I do, or that I did, and it's all recorded, you'll get that sent right to you in your email, but then you'll be the first to know about other free coaching calls that I do, other things that I have going on, other things coming up, and you get free coaching just sent to you in your inbox. Um, Every so often, I wish I had it, I don't actually wish, but (laughs) I don't have it on a regular schedule. But whenever I have a thought or something that comes up in our coaching calls that I want to share with y'all, I send it out in an email and hopefully you find it um, helpful and I send it out with lots of GIFs. So if you're on my email list and you feel like you haven't been getting them, apparently, I didn't know this, but apparently if there's a lot of videos or photos in an email, it's more likely to get put in your spam folder. Did you guys know this? I didn't know this. I send a lot of GIFs in my emails. So if you um, are on my email list, but you haven't been getting them, go look in your spam folder. They're probably there. (laughs) Okay. Um, And that is how you know about things like my retreat. I had two people talk, ask me about this this week. So I wanted to remind y'all, I am hosting an in-person three-day retreat. I'm calling it a go forward instead of a retreat in Nashville in October. It's going to be the second week of October, and I'm super excited. This will be from Thursday night until Sunday morning. It is going to be three intense days of coaching and hanging out and girl time and having fun in Nashville. But really, this is just your opportunity to come hang out with me and to get a lot of individual attention. Plus, we're going to have so much fun. I cannot Wait, I think I'm just super excited about this. So there are only going to be about 15 spots because that we're just limited by the Airbnb that we're staying in, which is so nice, by the way. So ladies, I don't have the exact amount that it will be. I don't have it all exactly priced out yet, but start saving your pennies and make sure that as your husband and you are planning vacation days this year, you leave the second weekend of October open so that you can fly into Nashville and come hang out with me for an entire weekend. I'm so excited about it. If you guys already know that you want to be in it, you can email me and we'll we'll let you know when all of it opens. So I'm really, really excited about that. So again, put that on your calendar, start saving your pennies because it's going to be an amazing time. All right, ladies, today I want to talk to you about emotional intimacy. I did a class last week inside my coaching program called Intentional 
intimacy. As you guys know, intentional is my word for the year. And I'm kind of bringing that into my coaching program, exploring different ways that I can be intentional and that we can all be intentional. I'm super excited about the classes we have coming up with parenting and food and money and spirituality and all of those things. But last week's class was about intimacy. And so I wanted to share a little bit of of that with y'all um, and then encourage you, if you enjoy this podcast, to come join my coaching program because you'll get access to the entire class, which I don't have time to go into on this podcast, um, plus all of the incredible coaching that you get along with it. So let's talk about intimacy, shall we? So it was funny when I was talking to my husband about this, he was like, you know, it's funny every time you say intimacy, I immediately think physical intimacy. I typically think of emotional intimacy, but he thinks of physical intimacy. And that was, I don't know why, that was just like a little funny aside. But as I was thinking of intimacy, I went to look up what intimacy is, and this is what it said. It said that it is close familiarity or friendship or just closeness. So that's really what I want you guys to think about. Intimacy is all about being close and how if you do not feel like you are emotionally intimate with your husband, often that's what it feels like. It feels like there is a distance, right? It feels like there is kind of this space between you, right? Do you guys see what I'm saying? So what we want is for that space to be gone. What we want is for us to feel close. Now, in my coaching class that I taught, I asked everyone, what they thought intimacy was, and why they think they don't feel that way, why they don't have it, what is preventing them from having it. So I want you guys to think about this right now as you're listening. What is preventing you? If you do not feel close to your husband right now, what is preventing you from feeling that? Go ahead and answer it in your mind. What do you think is preventing you from feeling close to your husband? Okay. Just keep thinking, you guys can pause the podcast if you need to and then press play again, but I'm going to keep going. Okay, here's what happened. When I asked that question on my call, nine out of 10 of my women said something having to do with their husband. Um, I don't feel close to him because he doesn't initiate conversation. I don't feel close to him because he's watching porn. I don't feel close to him because he doesn't ask me how I'm feeling. I don't feel close to him because he doesn't say the things that I want him to say. He doesn't care about my feelings, okay? All of those ladies are just thoughts, okay? They are not the actual thing that is preventing you. It's not something outside of you that's preventing it. It's that thought right there, okay? So whatever it is that you're thinking, nine out of 10 of you probably just came up with something that's about him. And what I want to offer is that closeness, intimacy, which is feeling close, is a feeling, okay? And if you guys have learned anything from this podcast, you know that a feeling is something you feel because of the thoughts you are thinking, not because of what he is doing or not doing, okay? You, if you don't feel close to your husband, it's not because of his actions, it's because of your thoughts about his actions, okay? Now, what I wanna offer here is that, let's say you don't necessarily want to feel close to him right now, and that's totally fine. But if you do, then I wanna offer some things today that can hopefully help you recognize where you are, why you're there, and you can change it if you want to, okay? One of the things that I brought up, um, I wanna make two points here today on the podcast. One is that closeness is often what we feel between two people, right? So if there's you and your spouse, you feel close because it's just the two of you. One of the reasons that we often don't feel close or feel intimate or feel that emotional intimacy is because we are often putting someone else in between us and our husband. Okay, follow me on this. We think, our brain likes to think that the thing that's in between us is his addiction. And because he's the one that started it, he's the one that put it there. But I want you guys to notice how often you do it with your own thoughts. How often, anytime you have a thought about his pornography addiction, that is you putting his addiction in between you and him. Okay, that's not him putting it there. That's you putting it there with your thoughts. I think the most Clearly that I see this is often in physical intimacy. And I have a whole 
video module inside my program where I dive into this and I give real clear examples of how often we do this, but I see this so much with my clients, is often when there's a physical intimate intimacy where there's that kind of situation, we often then all of our insecurities come up and we think, I wonder if he's thinking about somebody else. Why is he initiating? Did he watch something today or did he have an urge for something and now he's just reaching out to me? Okay, all of those thoughts, that is us putting his addiction in between us and him. He's not bringing those in to the situation with his thoughts. We're bringing that in with our own. And that's something I really want to encourage you all to take a look at. In moments when you don't feel emotionally connected to him, in most in moments where you feel like there's something in between you, I want you to be really honest with yourself and ask yourself, who's bringing this in between us? Is it him or is it me? Because most of the time, ladies, this is a hard pill to swallow, but most of the time it's us. And this is the best news, ladies, because again, if we're the ones bringing the, the thing in between us, if we're the ones that are creating our own separation from our spouse, then we can fix it, which is the best news ever because then we don't have to wait for him to fix it. We'll be waiting forever, okay? Our thoughts are what are in between us and him. When we bring his addiction, when we bring his past self, this is a sneaky one, right? If we think, man, he's just not the man he used to be. That thought right there is putting his past self in between who you are right now and who he is right now. And that is going to prevent you from feeling connected to him because now it's not just about the two of you. There's someone else in between. We even do this with his future self, right? And we do this with the best of intentions, right? And we think it sounds really nice to say things like, I just know he has so much more potential. I just know this isn't a true reflection of him and that if he just wanted to, he could be so much better. Sounds really nice, ladies. All that is is putting his future self in between who you are right now and who he is right now. We even do this with our past self or our future self. I want you to just notice anytime you place someone else in the equation, that is going to create more of a distance between you and him. And that is one of the reasons why you might not feel as connected or as close to him as you want to. It's because you're putting someone else in between. A lot of times this comes up for us, this comes up in comparison. Okay, I'll never look like the women that he's seen. Okay, something like that. Um, I'm never going to be. Uh, what if? What if he's not as attracted to me as he is to those other women? Okay, again, thoughts like that where you're comparing yourself to who even knows who he's seen on the screen, what your brain thinks he's seen, then that is placing those women, those images in between you and your spouse. And it's your work to overcome those thoughts so that you remove those so that there's a chance for you and your husband to get even closer. Does that make sense, ladies? Okay, I wanna offer one more thought that's really, really powerful. One of the biggest reasons why you, why I, or that I see that women often don't feel emotionally intimate or emotionally connected with your husband is a fear of rejection. And I want to tell you guys what that means. Okay. When you are afraid of getting hurt, you put up a wall. When you are afraid of emotional pain, then what your brain wants to do is retreat. Your brain wants to be at a distance. Your brain wants to hold off. It wants to keep him at arm's length on purpose because your brain thinks that if you keep him at arm's length on purpose, then you won't get as close and attached. And then if he messes up again, you won't get as hurt. Okay, this is a lie, first of all. Okay, but second of all, I want you guys to notice that this is a fear. This is a fear of feeling emotional pain, fear of feeling rejected, fear of feeling that feeling if he actually does relapse again. That's really what your brain is worried about. When your brain says, well, I'm really scared of him relapsing again. Why? Well, because I don't want to get hurt again. That right there. You are afraid of feeling emotional pain, afraid of feeling worthlessness, rejection, all of those things. I'm going to call it fear of rejection because that's ultimately usually what comes up, okay? When you are afraid of feeling rejected, what we do is we put up those walls. We do it on purpose. Ladies, we're the ones that put up the walls. We are the ones that disconnect ourselves from their, our husband. As long as there is a wall there, 
then no matter what he does, he could be clean tomorrow and be clean for the rest of his life. As long as you keep that wall up with that fear of rejection, you will never be able to bridge that. You will never feel as close to him as you could because you've built the wall. He can't tear that down for you. Again, he could be clean forever and it won't matter because your fear of rejection is causing you to be distant, causing you to not open up, causing you to not be vulnerable. And all of those things are going to prevent you from feeling close, which is really just rejecting yourself in advance. We get so scared of feeling rejected that we distance ourselves and, and ultimately make ourselves feel rejected right now. That's what we're doing. Do you guys see how crazy this sounds? And when we say it like that, it sounds nuts. But our brain operates like this all under the under the motivation of avoiding emotional pain. This is one of the reasons why it's so crucial to come and learn about your emotions and understand that your emotions are nothing to be afraid of. So that when your brain starts to put up those walls, starts to distance yourself, starts to say, no, I don't want to get close to him because if I do, I might get hurt then you remind your brain, so what? What if I were willing to get hurt? What if I were willing to feel that emotional pain? What if I were willing to do it anyway because I would rather feel close to him now than to not feel close to him now and still feel emotional pain later? If I try to feel close to him now and I do everything that I can, odds are, yes, I can get close to him now. Does that mean I might feel emotional pain later? Maybe. But the very worst thing that can happen, ladies, when you feel a feeling is you just feel it. Your brain doesn't understand that, but you are smarter than your brain and you have to start being in charge of your brain, being the boss of your brain and telling your brain, you know what? I don't want to put up these walls anymore because I want to feel close to my husband. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to tear this wall down, which means I'm going to have to be willing to be afraid of feeling rejection. And I could just feel afraid. And then I can understand that rejection is just an emotion. And that the very worst thing that can happen if I feel it, which is not a guarantee, is I'll just feel it. And I can get really good at feeling emotions and I'm willing to do it anyway. Right now, ladies, the one of the biggest things that I see is that, and that I don't want for all of you, is for you to keep living your life trying to avoid your emotion. This is why we always feel like we're running so ragged is because we're trying to avoid our own feelings, which is impossible because your emotions live inside of you, ladies. So the more we try to run around them, the harder it becomes, the more exhausted we become. We feel like we're not getting anywhere with our life. This is why we crash because we're trying to get out of how we're feeling simply by avoiding it. And it's impossible to do that. If you really want to overcome this, You have to learn how to feel your feelings. That is what I teach. And if you want to become intimate with your husband, if you want to have that emotional connection, then the two things that you really need to watch out for are having someone come in between the two of you. And most of the time, that's us adding it in. And then the second thing to be really cautious of is if you notice that you have a fear of rejection, because that is the biggest thing that is going to block you from feeling close to your husband is that own wall that you are building. And as long as you're building that, it doesn't matter what he's doing. He can be going to therapy. He can be going to meetings. He could be clean from now till kingdom come, ladies. If that wall is there that you've built, you will never feel reconnected with him. And that is all your work. If you want help with all of this, ladies, I want to really encourage you to come join my coaching program. Not only will you get one-on-one coaching with me so that you can get... Um, We can work through your specific thoughts individually, but you'll also get the rest of this class that I taught, this intentional intimacy. This was just a super tiny part of that class, and it was so good, and the coaching was amazing, and you will have access to that coaching call, to that replay, to all of that content inside my coaching program. So come join. It's $2,500. You get lifetime access for as long as the program exists. You guys get access to it. Okay, come join I want you guys to move forward. That's what I want. Isn't that what you guys want? Don't you want to move forward? This is what I want for y'all. And I want to help you do it as much as you possibly can because where you are right now kind of sucks. Let's be honest. Okay. And I want to help you move forward. All right, ladies, go out there, start recognizing your thoughts, start noticing things, come join coaching. I will help you do it. I love you so much. And I will talk to y'all on a brand new episode next week. So take care. 
All right, my ladies, if you enjoyed that podcast episode, you have to come join my coaching program. It is $2,500 for lifetime access to all of my online content and all of my coaching calls. Not only will you get one-on-one attention from me through coaching calls, you will also get to join this amazing community of women who are all working through this the exact same as you are. You'll also get 24-7 access to me through Slack, our private group messaging channel, and you will get access to all of the new material and content that I create. If you are ready to start applying everything that you've learned on the podcast and really take everything to the next level and start creating who you are as more than the porn addict's wife, I want to encourage you to come join my program today. Head to jolenewin.com, click on join, and you can join anytime. I can't wait to see you there.